we're going to go straight into it. Uh, but actually, before I go straight into it, I'd love to say a joke. Is that right? Mm -hmm. There was um, there was this lady one day. She was crossing the road, and um, while she was crossing it, apparently a, a car came just here and, and she died. And then the angel came to take take her away, and the angel checked her. Um, her, li her life sort of book, she he said, oh, sorry, there is a mistake. You still got another 20 years to go. She said, what? She said, oh, I don't want to go back. She said, no, sorry, another 20 years to go, you got to go back. And she said, okay, Angel, uh, if I go back, can I just ask for a favor? I said, yeah, yeah fine. She said, well, um, can I, like, do a facelift and change my looks? I don't know, maybe she had a big nose or something, I'm not sure. And can I like have fun on a reasonable sort of level and travel around and enjoy life? He said, yeah, yeah, fine, that's okay. So anyway, she went back and uh, she done the um, cosmetic surgery and she looked absolutely wonderful like Mariah Carey. And, um, and she had fun, she traveled around and everything. And not even a year after she had done all these things, she was crossing the road one day and an ambulance was flying on an emergency call. Hit this woman, she died. The angel came again to take her away, and she is whinging, complaining. She said, Angel, you told me I've got 20 years to go. It hasn't even been one year. What happened? The angel said, Oops, sorry, I didn't recognize you. <laughs> so whatever you do, don't change your looks, okay? <laughs> Stay the way you are. Right here. Was that a good job? Yeah. For an old man like me? Okay, the temple of King Solomon. Guys, ever since the, the fall of mankind, um, God came to raise a nation for Himself and dwell among them. And that nation in the Old Testament we all know and heard, the Israelites. Now God, as I've written this on the board, God had four dwelling places among His nation. It started with the tabernacle of Moses. And that was built in the wilderness after they left Egypt. And they remained 40 years in the wilderness. God came and built that tent, the tabernacle of Moses. And that tent was originally built in the wilderness and then was brought to the promised land. And you find that in the book of Joshua, chapter 18 and verse 1. The second tabernacle was the tabernacle of King David. And actually not a lot of people talk about the tabernacle of King David. And you'll find that in the book of Chronicles, book uh, number 1 and chapter 15 and verse 1. Maybe it's a good idea sometimes when you come to Bible studies, if you're really keen on knowing the Bible, is to have a piece of paper and pen and write it down and then check it out. Maybe the priest is telling you wrong information. So yeah, um, now I just want to bring it to your attention, the difference between the tabernacle of Moses and King David. By the way, do you know what tabernacle is? Maybe um, it's too biblical for you. Tabernacle is, um, is a dwelling place. We call it uh, Meshkan Zona. It's an, it's an Aramaic or, or a Syrian uh, language, Syrian. So it's a place of dwelling. Tabernacle means literally the place of dwelling. So that tent which was built in the wilderness is symbolic for the church that we come to every Sunday. Okay? Now, um, so, the dwelling place for God to be with His people, the dwelling place of Moses and King David, the difference between these two, the tabernacle of, uh, of Moses was to sacrifice animals. But the tabernacle of King David was to praise God. And also, um, Moses' tabernacle was only for the Jewish people. If you are not a Jew, you are not allowed to go there and, and, and pray and uh, and you give your sacrifice. But the tabernacle of King David was for the Jews and the Gentiles. That means for everyone. And there was a prophecy that the Lord God will raise the tabernacle of King David in the end of times. And you find that in Psalms 62. Psalms number 60 and verse 2. That God would raise that tabernacle. And King David is symbolic for the Lord Jesus. That means the place where people live together will worship God all nations, not just any particular denomination, but all nations of the world. And now Christianity, the church of the Lord Jesus, is a combination of all 
different nationalities, colors, and walks of life. Because the Lord Jesus came to, the, uh, to save the whole world. And you find that in the Gospel of St. John 3.16. And there was another place which we're going to talk about today is the Temple of King Solomon. And that you find that King Solomon started building it in 2 Chronicles and uh, chapter 3 verse 1. Uh, this Temple of King Solomon was destroyed by King Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonian Empire. Um, it started with the um, Babylonian Empire. And then it came as the um, uh, Greek Empire after that. Babylonian and then Medes and Persia. And then the Greek Empire, Alexander the Great. And then the Roman Empire, which was at the time of the Lord Jesus. So, the Babylonian Empire, Nebuchadnezzar the king, destroyed this temple. And it was rebuilt um, after the 70 years of exile. Because the Israelites were taken to ba Babylon, which is in Iraq. They were taken captives, and 70 years they were in exile. And after the 70 years, they went back to, to Israel to rebuild that temple. And that was rebuilt, and then it was expanded and made bigger by King Herod the Great in about roughly 16 BC. And it took 46 years to actually finish that job. That's a bit of a history about the temple. But let's go to the temple of King Solomon. <coughs> Here we go. I've written some notes so I don't forget what I'm talking about. When God led his people from Egypt, he said he made a promise that I will bring you to a place and I will put my name, I'll stamp my name on that place and that will be the promised land for you guys. And, and that's in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 12. The temple of King Solomon was built on Mount Moriah. I think that's the way it's spelled. Mount Moriah. Mount Moriah, if you're not, if you're not sure where it is, it's where currently now the, the uh, Dome of the Rock and the Mosque of Al-Aqsa the Muslims in Jerusalem. Have you, you know what I'm talking about? That golden dome? Mm -hmm. uh, which it's the second uh, holiest place for the Islamic people to go and visit. And they have a mosque also in there that fits about 5,000 people. I actually have been, I have been to Israel and to Jerusalem in the year 2000 and I've, I've gone inside of, the, and inside of the actual rock of the dome, that golden dome. Uh, it's very nice. It was actually built by um, Byzantines, Christian people from Syria. So they were the, the genius of the Christian people. And Syrians too. Um, so, God brought his people and he said, I want my temple, which King Solomon built, on Mount Moriah. Now I'm going to just tell you a few things about Mount Moriah and then we're going to link this temple to us. How we are the temple of God. Mount Moriah, my beloved, is two mountains into one. It's a combination of two mountains, but it's a one mountain. And it's made in three different levels. There is <coughs> the lower section, and then there is the upper section, and then the top. The lower section is called Mount Oval. The second level is called Mount Zion, and the top section is called Mount Moriah. So this Mount Moriah is three mountains, or three different levels in this particular mountain. The bottom one is called Mount Ophel, and uh, Nehemiah, who is a prophet of the Old Testament, in, in 326 talks about this mountain. <coughs> now, Mount Ophel, Mount Zion, and then Mount Moriah. What is the Holy Bible is trying to tell us here? What is trying to teach us here? It's prophetically talking to us of a spiritual meaning. What is Mount Ophel? What is Mount Zion? And what is Mount Moriah? Illustrate here. Mount Ophel is where the Lord Jesus met that blind man. And you find that in Mark chapter 8. He was blind from the womb. The Lord Jesus spat on the ground, made some mud, put it on his 
face and he said go and wash in that uh, place of uh, Shalom or Shalom and it was, a, it was a pond of water where they go and wash uh, you know, an angel is to come once a year and shake the water and whoever goes there first is healed from all illnesses physical, spiritual, whatever it is and the Lord Jesus met this guy who had no eyes so the Lord Jesus made mud he spat on the ground, made mud and he put it on his face he said go and wash in that pond of water he went and his eyes were created he didn't have eyes 